Okay, so we are ready to prove this theorem, which says that uniformly continuous functions preserve Cauchy sequences. So let's move back a couple of slides just to remember the origin of this theorem. So here, we have this theorem that was kind of comparing continuous functions to uniformly continuous functions. Continuous functions preserve convergent sequences. And we're saying, analogously, uniformly continuous functions preserve Cauchy sequences. So let's go ahead and look at the proof of that. So suppose you have a function that's uniformly continuous, and you have a sequence in the domain of the function that is Cauchy. Our claim is going to be that fxn is a Cauchy sequence in R. So, if you look at it like maybe S is somewhere over here. If you have a Cauchy sequence and your function is uniformly continuous, then the image of these points will also form a Cauchy sequence, right? So these points over here will be Cauchy. So let's go ahead and prove it. And of course, in order to prove it, we need to know our definitions. Um, our goal is to show that Fn is Cauchy. So let's put in here, we want to show that for each epsilon greater than zero, there exists an index n such that n and m bigger than n implies the distance between f of xn and f of xm is less than epsilon. So that's what we want to show. And in order to do that, we're going to just say, let epsilon greater than zero be given. Now, we're told by hypothesis that f is uniformly continuous. So we know that since epsilon is greater than zero, there has to be a delta. So since f is uniformly continuous, on S, and epsilon is greater than zero, there exists a delta greater than zero such that for all X and Y and S, whenever the distance between X and Y is less than delta, the distance between F of X and F of Y is less than epsilon. So we want the distance between f of xn and f of f xm less than epsilon. And we know that under certain conditions, the distance between f of x and f of y is less than epsilon. So can we get it so that x and y are xn and xm? Can we get it so that we have xn and xm within delta of each other? That would imply this part right here, which is what we want. So how can we get Xn and Xm within delta of each other? Well, remember, we're working with a Cauchy sequence. So that means that the terms are, um, that means that the terms are, we can go far enough out in our sequence to have the terms be arbitrarily close to each other. So since delta is greater than zero and my sequence Xn is uniformly convergent. Sorry, my sequence is Cauchy. There exists an index N such that N and M bigger than N implies the distance between xn and xm is less than delta. But now that is going to imply that the distance between f of xn and f of xm is less than epsilon, which is what we wanted. Okay, So we kind of hooked together the definition of f being uniformly continuous on s and the definition of xn being Cauchy to get that f of xn is going to be Cauchy. Okay. And now you might say, hey, how is, uh, how is this theorem 
helpful. The theorem says uniformly continuous functions preserve Cauchy sequences. We'll think of it again similarly to how we think of continuous functions preserving convergent sequences. So the proof that uniformly continuous functions preserve Cauchy sequences was so straightforward that it's almost like you're describing the essence of what it means to be uniformly continuous, right? So just like the essence of what it means to be a continuous function is that it preserves convergent sequences. If you want to talk about a function that preserves Cauchy sequences, that is a function that's uniformly continuous, okay? So there was some confusion because the textbook said that sequences are Cauchy if and only if they are convergent. However, those sequences are Cauchy if and only if they're convergent in R. Here, we're not looking at the entire space of R. We're looking at subsets of R, right? So you could have a sequence that is Cauchy in a subset of R, but it's not convergent in the subset because its limit doesn't exist in the subset, okay? So be very clear that in Ross, and in fact, maybe I could try to find it, in Ross... Um, I want to say it's chapter 13 or section 13 where they talk about, um, let's see here. Where they talk about, I'm just going to scroll until we get to, um, Um, okay, I can't find it, so I'm just going to have to scroll here. Cauchy sequences. Yeah, so see here, we're saying a sequence is convergent, if and only if it is a Cauchy sequence. This is talking about in R. A sequence is a convergent sequence in R, if and only if it is a Cauchy sequence in R. So you could have a sequence that's convergent. You could have a sequence that is Cauchy in S, but it's not convergent in S because the limit doesn't exist. Okay. So everything here is talking about your space being R. And remember, R satisfies the completeness axiom. If you switch to a space that doesn't satisfy the completeness axiom, then you're no longer guaranteed to have every Cauchy sequence convergent. Okay. And so the last thing I wanted to do was go back and prove, right? So we used that theorem there, and in class we did this. We used that theorem to prove that one over x squared is not uniformly continuous on this interval, because we found a Cauchy sequence in this domain, but it wasn't mapped to a Cauchy sequence, right? So that means that our function here can't be uniformly continuous on this domain. Let's go back and prove, um, so we, we proved this one. Let's go back and prove that f of x equals one over x squared is continuous on zero to infinity. And also let's prove that f of x equals 1 over x squared is uniformly continuous on any set like that. So first question here, why is f of x equal to 1 over x squared continuous on 0 infinity? Answer. We'll use our sequential definition of continuous. So we'll say fix x naught in the domain. Suppose xn is in 0 to infinity and xn goes to x naught as n goes to infinity. Right? Then f of xn is going to be 1 over xn squared. And our limit laws 
state that x in going to x naught x naught not equal to zero. How do we know that x naught is not equal to zero? Because we said x naught is in our space. So x in is converging to x naught. x naught is not equal to zero. One over x in is going to converge to one over x naught. Reciprocals. So we also need that each x in is not equal to zero. Okay. And also we know that if uh if you have a sequence, right, a sub n goes to a naught, b sub n goes to b naught, implies a sub n b sub n goes to a naught b naught. So one over x n goes to one over x naught, one over x n squared has to go to one over x naught squared. This is f of x n. This is f of x naught. So x n going to x naught implies f of x n goes to f of x naught. So f is continuous at x naught.